All right, what's happening guys? It's Shane again and today we are going to be doing our first ever interview on the channel. Today we are going to be interviewing an accountant. His name is Bill and I'm going to go ahead and let Bill introduce himself right now. Yeah, thanks Shane. Um, so uh, this is the first interview for, uh, for yourself to do on your channel as well as for me. This is the first interview that I ever do. Uh, and I'm uh, just uh, very glad and happy to be here with you, um, you know, share my experience uh, being an accountant uh, over the last 15 years, um, you know, and uh, I'm just happy to give a quick background of myself first to your audience. Um, so my name is Bill Hanna. I'm a, a licensed CPA um, and I have um, a career that spans 15 years in accounting that uh, started out uh, an audit with uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, many of your audience who are into finance or accounting will be familiar with the big four uh, accounting firms and uh, PwC is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I transitioned out from uh, public accounting with PwC into a private industry uh, where I worked in a variety of um, industries and roles ranging from a financial analyst and then working my way up the ladder to a corporate controller, which is what I do today. Uh, so, um, it's a typical sort of, uh, in the industry, in the accounting industry is a typical career path, which is what I took, which is, you know, starting out in public, you know, learning the ropes of, you know, uh, audit and audit programs and working and, you know, with public, uh, publicly traded clients. And then from there you go and work in private industry. Um, so that's the typical path. Um, so the industries that I specialize in as an accountant, um, I worked in manufacturing, and then I worked in uh, services and I also worked in software um, or tech, which is what I do now. I work as a controller for a tech uh, company in New York City. Um, and yeah, so this is just like a big, like a kind of a background and an overview. And um, yeah, so beside that, I, you know, just on myself, I, I just, I live in New Jersey, so I'm in the East Coast, um, you know, live with my wife, who's also an accountant. Um, and um three kids. Uh, so yeah, just a quick over overview. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us again today, uh, Bill. So I just wanted to ask you some of these questions might be a, a little redundant because you probably just answered them, but can you just give me a quick background on your education? So what degree specifically did you get? So I have a bachelor's degree in accounting uh, from the City University of New York. Uh, so uh, those of you who are watching who live in New York or in the metro, the, the, the three-state, uh, tri-state metropolitan area will know that um, sort of an affordable option for college or university is the City University of New York or referred to as CUNY. Um, so I went to Queens College, which is one of the colleges within that system and uh, studied accounting, bachelor's degree in accounting. Got it. Yeah. So those can be some uh, very expensive colleges there in New York. Uh, I've talked about those a few, uh, a few times on the channel. Um, did, so you went straight into uh, like a big university, you didn't go to community college first or anything like that? Uh, no, yeah, just straight up to, um, you know, a four year, four, a four year college. Um, you know, some of the, it's funny because like some of the colleagues I've had, you know, along my career have gone to, you know, like for example, like a PwC, which is the public accounting firm I worked at, Mm -hmm. I've had colleagues who went to Villanova and went to like more expensive colleges. And we used to joke that we like, we end up just all working in the same group and making the same salary, even though I spent like maybe 10% of what they spent on the degree. Um, so, <laughs> like this is a, you know, could be a topic for a whole video by itself. Uh, just talking like, you know, kind of ROI or cost benefit of going to an expensive college versus just like a, you know, an affordable state university, um, which is what I chose to do. And kind of like, uh, did my best there and got like really high grades, um, which I guess we'll get to at some point during the interview, um, you know, and invested more in that, uh, you know, so it, at the end, the outcome was very similar to some of the more expensive colleges. So it's very interesting uh, to see that, that dynamic. Right, right. That's one thing that I found is when you talk to, you know, different careers, for some of them, the college that you go to does matter. And then for some of them, it absolutely does not matter at all. Like the, the, it really doesn't matter. And then some of them, it's kind of a little in between. So you don't want to go to like an online, you know, for profit type of university. Uh, but at the same time, you don't have to go to, you know, an Ivy League university. So yeah, I've always uh, found that very interesting. And that's why I always recommend everybody on the channel that you talk to somebody who is in the career that you are trying to go for or who has been in that career or at the very least talk to somebody who's hiring 
uh, for that career. What role did you expect to be at uh, now versus reality? So what role did you expect to be at in 15 years uh, versus what happened in reality? Yep, yep. So, uh, you know, I think that the, the, it's funny because when, when it comes to that, like what do you expect to be in life in general? Um, it's similar to like uh, my picture for my whole life in general. Like when I was a kid, um, I had, you know, different ideas of what I wanted to be, what I wanted to become. Uh, would it be a doctor, an engineer, whatever the case may be. Um, went into college and, you know, this is full disclosure. When I went to college, I didn't have an idea in my head that I wanted to be an accountant, right? So I didn't choose the major right up front. I took the elective courses and some of the uh, introductory courses in college. Um, and then I chose accounting from a host of other uh, choices available to me. But the short answer to your question in terms of like where I, when I started out accounting, where I thought I would be after 15 years, I honestly thought I would be one of two things, either a chief financial officer of a company or mm -hmm. a partner at an accounting firm. Um, so uh, these are the two options that I thought are, you know, most available to accountants, you know, chief, chief financial officer or partner at an accounting firm. Now the reality is uh, I could, like, I realized that I could pursue either one. I could pursue becoming a CFO and I still can. And I'm actually, I am at to some level pursuing becoming a CFO. Um, however, I also look at the level of you know work-life balance, um, stress level of work versus reward. So you kind of have to look at the uh, reward versus stress. So for me, looking at a CFO position right now with uh, young children, I have to do the calculation of like how much more work or how much time I have to dedicate to my role versus how much time I need to spend, um, you know, nurturing my, my kids and family and taking care of them. So uh, being a corporate controller then became the happy medium where, where, you know, it's sort of an executive role of the company, but not the top executive when it comes to finance. So the top executive is going to be the CFO. Uh, the controller is going to be sort of the, that secondary level or second layer of executive power in the company when it comes to finance. Um, and so that was like a happy medium for me. Um, so yeah, the expectation was more of a CFO role in 15 years, um, and happened to land right now at a, uh, a corporate controller position. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I know there's a ton of opportunity in FinTech, you know, huge, huge industry there expanding, you know, at lightning speed right now, maybe one of the best industries you could possibly be in. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's a great point on work-life balance. Another thing I talk about quite a bit on my channel, um, not all about the money, in fact, after a certain point, uh, usually for most people, the money is not going to make you uh, any more happy. Now, of course, you know, living there in New York, it's a little more expensive. So yep. <laughs> you might need a little more than, uh, than average. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one point I always like to point out to uh, my audience for sure. Yep. Yep. There is uh, there's even a, I think I've, I read somewhere that there's a, a law of diminishing return after a certain level of like reaching a certain annual salary. Um, and I, I think the number was $75,000 a year or something like that, where, um, you reach that sort of the happiest point in like fulfilling all of your sort of like, like your essential needs. And then as you, uh, get, get, you know, get up from there and climb the ladder from there, um, you're adding more sort of stress and work to your life and, you know, getting more money, of course, mm -hmm. but it's, you sort of have to kind of, you know, walk this tightrope and like, make sure you're like balancing the two, uh, you know, so that's, that's the... That's the question I think that you're always going to be asking yourself as you progress in your career. Got it. So what skills within accounting are in hot demand right now? What are some of the best skills you can possibly learn? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, when we're looking at that, I think the best way to look at this is like when I look at a candidate's resume right now when I'm hiring on my team, what do I look for as a, as, as a controller? So what kind of accounting accountant I'm looking for? So the two major sort of um, skill, group of skill sets that I look for is going to be the financial systems and the knowledge of financial systems, sort of tying technology and finance together, mm -hmm. right? And we can get into that in more detail. And then the second group is going to be uh, someone who's able to interpret uh, the, the guidance, like the sort of the accounting uh, standards, like, you know, learning the pronouncements that are coming out of uh, the accounting bodies and uh, interpreting them and making sure that the company is following the right standards when it comes to accounting, uh, disclosure, financial statements, presentation, and all that. So uh, we can get into the, the each one in more detail, but 
you know, to me, like even more important than, than the technical accounting side is the financial system side. So someone who's able to um, automate things, and now this is becoming like the, 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 the keyword and the buzzword when it comes to accounting is, you know, using less of the, you know, the manpower when it comes to like crunching the numbers and, and you know, getting things out and using more of, uh, we refer to them now as bots. These are like the robots or the robotics mm -hmm. uh, and the systems that uh, talk to each other and, and transfer numbers from one place to another, um, eliminating, eliminating the human error and also speeding up the process. And it's a cost reduction when you rely on systems more than humans. So these are the skill sets that are like in, in hot demand right now when it comes to accounting. Got it. So uh, correct me if I you know, say anything wrong here, but learning something like some computer programming, Python, maybe SQL, something along those lines would be extremely valuable. Um, and then also just learning how to kind of uh, streamline and automate processes in general seems to be very valuable right now. Is that what you were saying towards the end? Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, you know, um, learning programming is, uh, you know, obviously 10, 10 or 20 years ago when you talk, when you talked about accounting, that was unheard of. Right. But now when you find a finance person who's also like a programmer or knows one of those languages is like a really killer combo right now. Um, mm -hmm. but like for your audience, like even at a, at a basic, more basic level, right. Even if we're not going the route of like learning Python or any other language like that at a basic level, um, make sure like whatever position you work at, you're learning the financial system that they're using. So if they're using an ERP software, uh, like SAP or NetSuite, um, get into that and like really understand how they're implementing all of that, the processes of the companies within the ERP software, right? The more you know um, of how the implementation of that software works, uh, the more you'll know how to troubleshoot it, and the more frankly, you'll know how to implement it in the next gig, right? So if I'm hiring you to work on my team, um, you're going to be much more valuable if you know that in the ins and outs and the, the mechanics of how NetSuite or one of those systems work. Um, and then, you know, further down, if you, you know, unpeel it further, you look at like other systems that, uh, you know, complement ERP softwares. So it's going to be like the Expensify. And these are like the expense, uh, expense management softwares, you know, Carta, um, is a, a host of systems now that are built outside of ERP software that complement all of the accounting processes. Uh, so learning, um, you know, what can be done with these softwares uh, at a basic level is important. But then on top of that, if you learn how to troubleshoot them and implement them, it's money. This is like this, you're sort of, you know, hugely valuable when it comes to, uh, you know, the market worth of what you can command as a salary. Um, so yeah, so I, I would put a huge emphasis on, on financial systems for sure. Got it. Okay. So for someone who is just about to graduate with an accounting degree, uh, could you kind of just break down maybe some of the main areas of work that they would be looking into right after graduation? So, you know, uh, the thing about working right after graduation, so what you'll be doing, um, isn't necessarily what are you going to be doing for the rest of your life, right? So I don't want someone to stress, to stress out on thinking, you know, for the first couple of years after graduation, you'll be doing, uh, you know, mainly mundane work when it comes to accounting and you should expect that, right? You'll be, you'll be, you know, sort of the lowest point in the chain in the team in terms of accounting and you'll be doing sort of the data entry, um, you know, basic coding uh, of transactions in the system or ticking and tying. I remember like my auditing days, you give you a huge binder and, you, and you're and just sitting all day confirming uh, the stock holding of this huge corporation uh, with their custodian, with their stockbroker. Um, so there's a lot of um, unglamorous work to be done at the beginning, uh, but that's um, sort of the groundwork that you're, you're, you're putting in, you're layering in these hours, uh, you're putting in these hours up front so you can learn sort of the ropes and learn the learn the, the, the language and, uh, you know, the accounting, the actual meat and potatoes of accounting. And then um, you'll be able to progress from there and do much more, let's call it sexier type of work when it comes to accounting, right? Um, so whenever, when you're graduating from, from school, you'll be either um, working in, uh, there are two major areas that you're going to be working in when you graduate with an accounting degree. 
it's either going to be uh, on the revenue side of the business or it's going to be on the expenditure or the treasury side of the business. These are like the sort of the two, and you can think of it as looking at an income statement. Um, there's two major buckets, you know, revenues and expenses. So you're going to be on either one of these two sides. So if you start out on the revenue side, um, you're going to be what's, what we refer to as a billing analyst or an accounts receivable analyst. So your job is going to be, uh, in a, you know, to summarize it, is going to be issuing the invoices to customers. You're going to be calculating, issuing invoices, following up with the customers, making sure uh, they got the invoices, they paid on time, and, and everything else that goes along with that, uh, which is, you know, as you progress in that, in that role, you'll be doing other things that has to do more with the technical accounting side of things, um, especially around revenue recognition. So that's from the revenue side. If you start out uh, in the expenditure side, and you can start out in either one, there is not one that's better than the other. Um, you need to learn both ultimately uh, so that you can become a more uh, rounded professional in accounting. Um, if you start out on the treasury side, um, and this is where the company spends money, you'll be uh, then processing the, the invoices that come from vendors, you know, reviewing them for errors, um, you know, putting them, entering them in the system, uh, making sure that whatever you're entering in the system then is translating into going into the right line item on the balance sheet or the income statement and that kind of thing. Um, and then as you then progress from that, you will get into a third group of um, uh, accountants at the company, which is the financial reporting, right? So once you've sort of worked and mastered the billing and the revenue side and then worked in the expenditure and the treasury side, you then uh, are ready to sort of work in financial reporting where now you're familiar with, with other uh, mechanics of the AP and AR and then you're now ready for financial reporting. And this is, uh, that's when you start getting paid higher um, salary um, and you, you begin to do more strategic stuff. Um, and so, yeah, this is the expectation that you should have uh, if you get into accounting right after college. Got it. So I know that uh, especially when it comes to accounting, certifications are extremely important. So uh, what would you say are the most important certifications or the ones that have the most impact? Yeah. So, you know, this one is, um, you know, a lot of your viewers will know like um, for accountants, you know, CPA or certified public accountant is going to be like the gold standard in terms of, you know, knowledge, experience, um, and quite honestly, um, stamina. Because, you know, to become a CPA, um, I think it's referred to as probably the second most difficult exam, sort of nationwide exam. I believe the number one is um, either the bar or the actuarial exam, one of the two, I forget. Um, but it's a, it's a, there's a few requirements that are requi needed for to become a CPA. So first you need to have a four year degree in accounting. Um, you need to have an experience working under a CPA uh, for a year or two, depending on your jurisdiction. Uh, and then you need to sit for and pass uh, a four-part exam. So, um, you know, I, I remember, you know, passing my exam like maybe five or six years into my career. Um, and just to give you like an, a quick an idea of like the impact that I had on my career, um, there's a, like an immediate raise that, that I got. It was like 10% maybe. Um, and then followed by the next role that I went to, I was able to command a much higher uh, number in terms of salary because of the certification. Um, and that's simply because you're perceived as someone who's have, you know, the experience and the knowledge to sit for the exam and then to be able to, to pass the exam itself. Um, you need to have a certain, you know, threshold. It's a, I guess it's a threshold of knowledge. If you, if you pass the exam, you, you, you're required to know um, uh, a lot about accounting, auditing, economics, and finance. Uh, the other certification that's uh, becoming very popular is uh, CMA, or uh, Certified Management Accountant. Um, it's also becoming an, sort of getting equal to what a CPA can do or can or, or would know, um, except uh, CMA is a little bit different because it has a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, manufacturing and cost accounting. Um, and you see increasingly a lot of controllers having CMAs now versus CPAs. Uh, I'd say the distinction is that when, when you get your CPA, it opens the door for you to work in publicly traded companies as a controller um, versus a CMA. So 
usually if you look at the profile on LinkedIn of like publicly traded companies controllers, you'll find uh, that they are for the most part, nine to the tune of 95 percent are CPAs. And so I highly recommend uh, getting a CPA certification for anyone who's getting into accounting. Got it. Awesome. So uh, the next set of questions is probably going to be a little bit redundant as well. So if you've already you know, answered this or if it's pretty obvious, which I think this first one in this particular case is going to be pretty obvious, uh, then just, you know, uh, just say so. Um, but there are some degrees where there's like a lot of different careers you can go into. And then there's some careers where there's a lot of different degrees uh, that you can get in order to go into that career. So it doesn't matter as much. But uh, what degree or education would you recommend uh, getting in order to become an accountant? I know the most obvious answer is going to be to, work, to get a, you know, an accounting degree to work in, as an accountant. Uh, but beyond that, um, just because of the uh, flexibility within finance right now, um, you'd see a lot of movement for people who work in accounting um, and finance. And these are sort of like two distinct areas of, of working within finance. Uh, there is the accountant uh, and then there is the financial analyst, right? And so from my experience, uh, getting a degree uh, or a major in accounting has been um, more beneficial to someone who wants to become even a financial analyst than getting a degree in finance. Uh, and the reason is, and it's, it's counterintuitive because if you work, if you want to be a financial analyst, uh, your first intuition is to get a degree in finance. But what I found is a lot of accounting professionals who have an accounting degree and work in accounting for many years have built such a, an, a, a, a huge knowledge, um, a deep knowledge of, what the general ledger is, what the financial statements, the mechanics of the financial statements at a much deeper level than someone who have a finance degree. Um, and so it gives you a more of an edge uh, to know sort of all the mechanics that behind the numbers on the financial statements uh, and how the financial statements are even put together and the, the accounting, the technical accounting guidance behind the numbers for you to be able to then create forecasts, budgets, and all the things that you know, financial analysts do. Um, and so my recommendation to someone who is still at a point in time where they can choose what degree to pursue uh, is to always uh, choose accounting over other related uh, business majors. Um, I am a little bit biased because this has been my experience, but also um, I have this sort of insight into you know, what kind of candidates I'd like to hire to work for me, even within financial analyst positions, I'm always looking for someone with an accounting degree and an accounting background over other business majors. Uh, so accounting degree uh, is, is, in my opinion, is the sort of, you get the most value out of it, um, both in accounting career and in finance career in general. Got it. Okay. That's some great insight. Great insight for the audience. Um, so what actually matters when it comes to getting your very first job out of college because I know that first job that's the toughest one you know you got to get your foot in the door get a little bit of experience it's that whole catch-22 situation of you need two years of experience to get the job but in order to get two years of experience you have to get a job so uh, what advice do you have to someone in terms of the most important things for getting that first job in terms of internships grades work experience uh, projects volunteering skills etc yeah, that's a great question. So um, I think that the most obvious thing that comes to mind is going to be grades. Um, and so getting good grades, you know, and I, I think that obviously everybody who's going to college, for the most part, everyone is trying to get the best grades that they can. Um, and I'll say as a hiring manager that grades are hugely important for those who are uh, still coming out of college. You know, later on in your life, as you progress in your career and you have a few, you know, years of experience, you know, under your belt, it's gonna matter less and less. Uh, but for uh, the, the first job and the second job perhaps, um, your grades are gonna matter uh, hugely. And so um, I really advise everyone to put a lot of effort into getting the best grades um, and getting you know, a grade point average that's uh, something that you feel proud of when you put it in your resume, right? Uh, a lot of times if you're not proud of it, you will leave it off your resume and I get it. But uh, I advise you to get it high enough that you want to put it out there and showcase it. And then secondly, um, I think that joining um, you know, clubs and societies in school uh, can get you uh, in a position where you can get an internship 
or an entry-level role must much faster. And the story with that uh, that I'll tell you is that in my fourth year of college, um, you know, both me and my wife were studying to be accountants. Um, she was part of the, 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 I forget the name of the club, but it has to do with the Latino, Latino accountants or aspiring Latino accountants. And so uh, she was invited. Um, both of us were good students for the most part, had really good GPAs. Um, she was invited to interview with, you know, a couple of big accounting firms, Ernest and Young, PwC, and a, and a third one, I forget which one. I, on the other hand, was, wasn't part of any of these clubs and I didn't get invited to any of these events. So you can see right there, and I, my, my, my grades were better than hers, but I wasn't invited to any of it because I wasn't part of these clubs. Um, what I did instead is um, when they had an event in the school, in the campus of the school, I just walked in and sort of like introduced myself, even though I wasn't even invited. Um, and it's a funny story. That's how I actually got my first job at PwC. Um, but this shows you the importance of joining clubs and societies in college. Uh, it may be, you know, extra work that you, you may not feel like doing, um, but it's really important in just getting that first job uh, where you'll learn, you know, get a good foundation in accounting. And so I guess we talked about, you know, the importance of grades, um, joining clubs and societies, and also uh, you know, related to clubs and joining clubs and societies is networking in general. Like I've, you know, I've known people who have gotten their first entry jobs or internships through their professors in college. Um, so just keeping, you know, a good relationship, good relationship with your professor, uh, networking with your club, with your uh, classmates. Um, sometimes you, you just hear of new opportunities. Um, so it's at the end of the day, when it comes to getting your first job, it's going to be about your grades and who you know. Um, so networking, whether it's uh, offline, like on campus or, um, through, you know, online on like a LinkedIn, um, it's, it's really important. So grades, um, societies, uh, clubs and societies and, uh, networking is really important. Got it. Um, kind of expanding upon that, uh, what you just said, I am a little bit surprised at what you just said. A lot of the time, uh, you know, I talk to different professionals and they'll tell me that their grades actually didn't matter. Like they wasted a lot of time uh, doing their grades. Um, and uh, it's, it's interesting to hear that. So that's really great insight for the audience. Um, I would like you, this is going to be a little bit difficult. Sorry about this, but I would like you to rank from order of least, uh, actually most important to least important um, grades, clubs, leadership positions, internships, work experience, networking, skills, uh, projects, and then the school that you actually go to uh, from from most important to least important in terms of getting your first job. So specifically for getting your first job out of college. Um, listen, I think it's a great question. Uh, but I'll tell you what, what this is like. This is like the ingredients to a great meal, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's cliche to say you need all of the above. But um, I'll say that you know any ex experience the thing is that the thing that la is lacking when you're a college graduate is experience that's your problem right that you have no experience mm -hmm. right you're looking for somebody to hire you but you have zero experience so i'll say out of all of these experience is key if you get some experience during college you know, try to get that uh so one of the things i've done when i went to college is i went to the careers office and i used to go and just sit there and flip through the pages where the that was you know back in the day now it's probably done online, but like back then it was a, actually an actual book, sort of like the yellow book and you go through the uh, job advertisements and apply to them. Get, I got some work in accounting during college and that has proven to be hugely important when I went to apply for my first job, right? Um, so having some experience is really good. Um, you know, on top of that, um, so this is the most important out of all the things you mentioned. Um, and then secondly, I'll say grades. Um, if I work my way backward and say the least important, I'll say leadership positions. And that's because simply when you're applying for your first job, you're not expected to be a leader. Um, so that's not hugely important. I'll put that at the bottom of the list. Um, I'll focus more on grades and getting some experience. Um, skills is going to be a byproduct of all of that. So if you get some experience and you focus in your studying and becoming a good student, you're going to acquire the skills. Skills, it's gonna it's gonna be there um, and like we mentioned in the previous question you know joining clubs and societies is just like a you know 
why, would, why wouldn't you do it? It's just going to help mm-hmm. you. Uh, so do it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I say it's important to, to kind of focus on all of these things and you know, tackle your grades and your skills and your experience. Um, but I'll just put on top of the list experience and um, getting some experience during college, uh, whether it's an internship, paid or not paid, um, and um, you know, focus on getting good grades. That's really important. Awesome. Okay. So are there any pitfalls uh, that people should know about going into accounting? Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, and this is something that you'll, you'll learn when you, if you go to college and you take accounting classes, um, one of the pitfalls that I've seen people do is they get into accounting thinking that it's more like, uh, more like math, like, you know, just, you know, adding sort of, being a, a number monkey and like a uh, being counter, um, it's really not. It's 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 way beyond that. It's more of you know being able to read uh, a pronouncement or a guidance um, from one of the accounting, the several accounting bodies, and being able to see how that relates to the business that you're working in. Um, it's becoming more and more of uh, you know reading sort of legal or literature language that is issued for accounting and applying it to the business um, or reading a contract that you, you know, you wrote with a customer or with a vendor and, you know, figuring out, you know, what could be the problems that could arise from this kind of contract or is it really good for the business or not? So this is one of the things I've seen people uh, focus too much on the math side of things when it comes to accounting uh, while they just, uh, realize later on that it's more of a and sort of a business. This is more of a business major more than a math major. Uh, the second thing I'd say when it comes to the pitfalls is the uh, amount of stress. Um, you know, when you're working in accounting, you know, just comes with the territory. You'll be issuing financial statements, right? And like, you know, who are the readers of financial statements? You know, these are investors, and like, these are like some of the most aggressive, you know, people out there, right? So. Um, inevitably you'll end up with a level of stress, right? Um, it's not a, you know, unmanageable level of stress. It's manageable, uh, compared to other careers. Um, but, uh, some people are just surprised by that, the, the amount of stress that you have, especially if it's a publicly traded company, right? There'll be a lot of pressure. Um, you know, however, you know, like I said, it's manageable and, and also you'll get, paid for it. You'll be rewarded for the level of stress that you, you put into your work and it's seasonal. So you're not, you know, sitting at the edge of your seat, you know, every single day, right? It's, it's manageable and it's seasonal. All right. So I guess the third, you know, one of the pitfalls that I've seen people, um, you know, think or have a misconception about accounting um, is something that they realize later on in, the, in their career uh, where accounting is not more, it's not a glamorous sort of work. Um, a lot of times when, when you speak to uh, family or friends about what you do, you know, they just glaze over and just not really, you know, care that much. So, and this is okay. Like this is something that I got, I got accustomed to. Um, it's not as sexy as working as an engineer or as working uh, in an ER room as a doctor. Um, so this is something that you need to know beforehand before you get into it. It's not a negative, um, but it is what it is right? It's, it's the perception of society of what an accountant is. Um, you know, someone may not perceive your, your, what you do as, as glamorous, but it's okay. You might be making twice as much as they make, right? It's fine. But, um, it's, 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 it needs to be something that, uh, is addressed and understood by someone who's getting into accounting before they, they begin their journey. Um, and so just to summarize the pitfalls, you know, Accounting is not math. Um, they're different. To be, to be in math is different than being in accounting. The stress level is there, but it's manageable. Uh, and then finally, uh, it's it's uh, it's not the glamorous sort of type of work that you can be sitting with a group of friends and discussing, and people will be kind of glued to the conversation. Um, it's not as sexy as that. So uh, just realize that before you get into it. Um, yeah, I would say these are like the pitfalls of you know of accounting. Would you say that an accounting is a relatively flexible degree? So what I mean by that is, let's say, you know, an 18 year old who's about to go to college thinks they want to go into accounting because they want to become a controller, for instance. So that's their goal. They want to become a controller. And then a few, you know, a few years down the line, they change their mind, right? They, 
they, they work a little bit and they're like, okay, I don't want to be a controller anymore. Would it be relatively easy for them to go in a different direction? Yeah, and that's a great question. So um, the flexibility that exists within accounting, uh, it's, it's there, but it's the limited flexibility uh, to the realm of finance, right? Um, so what I've seen, you know, the three major buckets, uh, I'd say in accounting is either taking sort of the controllership route. Um, if you realize that that's not really what you want to do, um, and you realize you want to do more of the strategic finance, you know, more of like, you know, th- you know, planning out the future, the, the financial future of the company. So that's more, that's more on the sort of the FP&A or financial planning and analysis. So that's sort of the second bucket that you can easily transition to from a controller to FP&A or financial planning and analysis. And then the third bucket is going to be now what's becoming a sort of, you know, uh, an extremely lucrative and hot market which is financial systems. So uh, this is like we talked about earlier, this is someone who can combine the know-how of you know, programming, the different, the various uh, financial platforms and software and how to tie this all together and make systems talk to each other and uh, make things more efficient, uh, less prone to error um, and faster. And so, yeah, so the flexibility exists in transitioning between these th- three major buckets, controllership or the accounting um, and then you have the strategic finance or the FPNA, and then you have the financial systems. These are the three buckets of work. And then the other flexibility that exists, and I've had colleagues in the past go to work for the government. Um, so, you know, for example, there is a you know, popular program with the FBI in working as a special agent in, in the accounting field, right? So this is one of a forensic, forensic accounting you're, you know, investigating, you know, corruption and government officials. A lot of times um, you're overseas and it's, it's, this is very glamorous and it's a lot of people, you know, pursue it. Um, it you need to have a certain requirement in terms of age, in terms of um, you have to go through some, uh, I think, physical uh, uh, test to get through it. Uh, the other thing that you can do as well is work for the UN. So, you know, I've had a colleague uh, go from a controller to working as a treasurer for the UN. So there's a lot of positions open open up with the UN. More difficult to get into than private industry for sure, um, but the flexibility is there. So I'd say there's a lot of flexibility within the realm of finance to move between you know accounting and, and finance positions. Got it. So would you say that maybe compared to other degrees or other types of careers that uh, you know an accounting degree would be one of the more flexible? out of all of them, or, or would you not say that? Um, you know, like to objectively say that, um, you know, because I've only had the one career, right, in accounting. Um, yeah, that, that can be kind of difficult to, yeah, to yeah. say. But I guess, I guess from, from judging from, you know, looking at, because I have friends who are engineers, doctors, in, in, different, um, in different walks of life, different, you know, different kind of career types. Um, and the flexibility that I've, that I've seen in my career has been great enough to say that it's been higher than even what they do. Um, you know, if you're a doctor, your choices are either working in a hospital as a doctor or, you know, having a practice. Um, mm-hmm. You could go work for a private company in research. Um, so, you know, you can tell here that there's flexibility in both in accounting and also in all of these other fields is what you make of it. Um, you know, plus, and this is really important, what other skills can you combine with this uh, to become something else? So, you know, you know, take accounting or finance and add communication skills, someone who's a great communicator, right? And you can easily become like a financial motivational, you know, motivation person. Um, mm-hmm. So, or a financial coach. Uh, so, uh, the ability to be flexible exists. It's just what you can add to it and combine combines another skill set with finance or accounting and make and you know reinvent yourself as something else you know that exists um so yeah there's i would say there's great flexibility compared to like other careers got it and then what type of i know this, is, this can be a pretty difficult one but what type of person or personality or you know natural traits uh do you think would be good uh for someone that goes into accounting yeah that's a good question so um you know, by definition, like just from my, my own experience working in accounting, um, you know, if you're in sort of personality type, uh, your personality type is an introvert and sort of, 
you know, um, thrive more in an environment where you're dealing with a smaller group of people, um, accounting is, is, is very well suited for, for you. Um, if you are going to be someone uh, who, you know, does really well with working with, you know, talking to people all day, um, you actually are happier when you talk to other people all day, um, then accounting might not be the right career path for you. Um, so the one area of, you know, in between or a gray area here is if you get into accounting as a mean of getting into strategic finance. When you work in strategic finance, you need to be sort of the extrovert type uh, who is going to be talking to everyone from sales, engineers, you know, around the company, um, pretty much every function around the company you need to be uh, communicating with as a finance or a strategic finance person. Um, so if, you're, if your personality type is an introvert, I think accounting is going to be very well suited for you um, versus extrovert. For that, I think, you know, more strategic finance uh, role will be much more uh, well suited. So for someone who is maybe on the fence between, you know, finance, accounting, some of the other business degrees, or maybe even someone who doesn't know if they want to do a business degree at all, they're just looking, you know, around at different degrees. Um, what would be your best advice for someone, uh, to, for a viewer to find out if accounting would be a good career path or getting an accounting degree would be a good degree for them to get? Yeah, good, great question. So I think that um, you know one of the steps you can take is um, when you, if you're in college and you're still kind of testing the waters and you're trying to look around and see what you should be doing, um, you know, taking an accounting accounting 101 class is a good way to kind of see. Uh, you know, you're gonna be stuck studying this for the next three years, right? So like you you really need to like it. Um, so uh, taking you know an accounting 101 course is is really good. Uh, the second thing you should be doing is um, doing your own research in terms of talking to people who are accountants um, and quite honestly doing what you're doing now if you're watching this video and kind of like seeing what it looks like to be sitting on the other side of the fence once you've kind of, you know, mid-career, you've put in, you know, a good number of hours and years learning. What does it feel now? You know, are you happy with the choice? Excuse me. So this is the kind of thing. You should be doing and exploring your own interests. You know, take a take a good class in accounting. Um, funny because uh, for me, I didn't really want to major in accounting necessarily, but when I took accounting 101, that professor was just an amazing guy. Um, so it, you know, it's interesting. What are the motivations, right? Like the guy used to speak so highly of his own, you know, private practice as as a CPA, and how much fun he has with it um, that he kind of convinced me to, to get into it. So, you know, I'd say, you know, taking a class and speaking to people is really important in kind of discovering in general what you want to do. Um, I just from personal experience, I, I enjoyed accounting in terms of, you know, studying it and working in it. Um, it's been rewarding to be someone who can, you know, open up the 10K of a public company and like really just know, you know, where to go and what to look for. Um, so, so yeah, this has been my experience and I, you know, advise everyone to kind of like do, you know, watch, you know, watch interviews, uh, you know, videos, try to get as much exposure to what it, it is really like to work as an accountant. There's uh, even like things that you can see online on like the day in the life. I think the day in the life is really important to kind of measure, you know, if you can see yourself doing this for a career. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I advise people to do. So let's say that uh, someone was looking into a very specific position, not necessarily, you know, you specifically, but let's say they were potentially thinking about becoming a controller, setting that goal for themselves. Uh, how would they go about getting in contact with a controller in such a way where they could maybe ask them a few questions, pick their brain to see if it's a good career path for them? You know, with LinkedIn, has been a good like a good place for that uh, where you know sort of at the early on in my career um, you know people are just more willing to talk to you than you think um, I think this is kind of a misconception that you think that you know no one has the time uh, which is true to some extent however you'll be surprised um, you know ask and you shall receive like ask for the advice uh, reach out and ask um, so LinkedIn is a great resource on like reaching out to people who, um, you know, don't necessarily has to be a controller, but it could be someone who's an accounting manager or a senior manager, uh, director, um, to give you some flavor, you know, 
especially if you wanted to get uh, specific. Like if you, for example, are you know contemplating whether you should get a position as you know a billing analyst, um, you know, getting getting in touch with someone who is a billing manager or someone who's been doing it for a little while um, can be helpful. And just knowing, you know, has this been, has, did this really work out for you? Did you learn from it and, you know, progress your career in the way that you thought you would? Um, so, yeah, I think it's, um, it's really, uh, uh, you know, a hidden uh, treasure to kind of go out there and look for, for these people to talk to. Um, don't be discouraged if you reach out to 10 people for only one person to get back to you. This is just the nature of things. People don't read their you know, messages or inbox that often. Um, sometimes you just not, you don't have the time for it. But you know, ask and you shall receive. Just like ask the question, reach out, um, and you know, you'll, you'll get some answers. Would you recommend maybe getting an opinion from several different people just so you can kind of get an idea because sometimes you might ask one person and it's like they're super passionate about the career you ask another person they're not not so happy about it um so it's probably a good idea to get a, an opinion from several different people if possible yes absolutely uh, you know i'll tell you like i you know i'm someone who's uh, you know biased because i really love what i do um so i'll tell you that it's it's fun it's rewarding it's awesome i'll tell you all these things you could talk to someone else uh, who's having, you know, I've seen people who had like a mid-career, you know, crisis where they want to, you know, get out of accounting and do other things because they found it to be boring. Um, and so, yeah, getting some different perspectives, um, yeah, that's really important, I think. Is there anything else that I didn't go over, any questions I didn't ask that you think are, you know, might be pretty important for someone who's potentially uh, looking to get an accounting degree or become an accountant? Um, you know, I guess like the, the one thing I'll add is um, the benefit of working in accounting is knowing the sort of the ins and outs of the numbers that go into the business. Um, so the, the funny thing about that is like when you go to a, a company, you want to talk to someone who knows everything that's going on, um, you're likely to be, you know, looking at an accountant. Um, you know, he's someone who's going to know, you know, sales, expenditure, uh, cash flow, um, financing, raising finance, uh, financing rounds or raising funds um, and all of these things, investor relations. Um, and so c compare that to someone who works in, um, you know, whether it's the R&D or engineering department uh, or in sales, uh, most likely they'll know sort of like their realm of what they do. They'll be really good at it. Um, however, uh, someone who can tie everything together for you is going to be someone who's working in accounting, uh, most likely. And so this is the one thing that sort of uh, people don't think about too much, um, and it's important, right? Like when you know the mechanics of everything that goes on in a company, it makes you much more rounded, not only in your career, but also as you know, when it comes to your investments, if you're like investing in the market, um, you know, knowing, you know, looking at the, the income statement and figuring out where the potential areas of, of, of issues are is really important. And so uh, that's one of the things that uh, I've, you know, I'll say has been like a rewarding sort of attribute to working in accounting in general. Got it. So would you say that uh, getting an accounting degree, getting a few years of experience working in accounting would be a really good way to build some skills, get some experience if later on maybe you decided that you want to start your own business and become an entrepreneur? Yeah. And in fact, you know, I've seen, you know, many, many people do that, like, you know, get into uh, either audit or accounting, you know, spend, um, you know, a decade or so, um, you know, most like the, the sort of the, the story that's most often told is that you, you do that for a number of years and then you kind of start your own practice as an, as sort of an accounting practice. Uh, and that's sort of the obvious thing to do. Uh, but I've also seen people just start up companies like that's not related uh, to accounting and it's either like a consumer product or a tech company that come from an accounting background. Um, a lot of people figured out how to solve problems when it comes to the, the technology side of accounting and went to, uh, to startup companies, you know, startup companies with uh, FinTech or, um, you know, financial technology companies in general. Um, so, you know, I'll say your intimate knowledge of fundraising, uh, creating data rooms, um, creating, um, you know, a package for investors to look at, this is that, this is what comes with the territory of being an accountant and also is what comes with the territory for being someone who is, uh, looking to raise funds for their own business. And so 
there's a good amount of overlap between the two. And so um, I, I really recommend for someone who wants to become a business person in the future, um, if not to fully become an accountant, but at least to get some exposure to accounting, um, specifically financial statements, um, to, to become more rounded in what they do. Got it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming on uh, today. This was my first ever interview on the channel. So uh, hopefully I did okay. And uh, where can the audience find you, Bill? So um, I have a YouTube channel called the Financial Controller. Um, and, uh, you know, you go in there, you'll find videos um, on either on career tips and advice for being in accounting or finance. I also discuss like interesting fraud cases like Enron and Luck and Coffee and things like that uh, mixed together with some of explaining some real life accounting tasks. Uh, the things that I do as a controller, the things that I see, you know, CFOs do and things like that. Uh, so you can find me on uh, the financial controller on, uh, on YouTube as well. Maybe you should make a video about GameStop. That's uh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just, uh, yikes. Yeah. I know. Um, that's the thing. It's such a rich uh, material, sort of like there's a lot of things that go on that you, if you have unlimited time, you'll you create all of this stuff to talk about these things, but uh, you got to have to choose your, bat your battles. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting story for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Bill, for coming on. Um, again, this was my first interview ever. So uh, for everybody that's watching, uh, if there's something that I didn't cover, if I didn't ask the right questions, or if, you know, I went down a path that you guys think I shouldn't go down. If I ask too many questions in one area, let me know down below. Also, um, I am going to link uh, Bill's YouTube channel down below as well. And uh, if anybody wants to ask questions, of course, you know, if you want to, Bill, you can definitely answer the questions uh, down below as well. So uh, thank you so much for coming on again and uh, have a good one. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. I really uh, enjoyed being uh, on your channel and talking to your audience. Um, I highly recommend accounting for those who are at the beginning of their journey. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, uh, like Shane said, you can write it down below in the comments. Uh, I'll be happy to respond to them as well. Awesome. All right. Take care, Bill. All right. See ya.